Hey, Composite Gloves here, and today I'm going to be showing you how to do custom scripting for the APC40. If you've never done programming, don't worry. It's really easy, and you're able to do a lot of cool things. So, just real quick, I wish someone had said this just at the beginning of a video or something. To load up a custom script, you hit the shift button, or you might have overview or whatever it says here. You click that, it loads up the little options. So you click these and bang, your custom script is loaded. Okay, what is the value of this? Well, now you can make it do, you can make it control basically whatever. Custom scripting only applies to the buttons. If you wanna know how to make knobs have permanent control over things or do specific things, I'll put a link in the video to permanent MIDI control. You, you are gonna use something called generic link control. Um, which I cover in another video. So I'll put a link to that down below. If you're coming from the Elise's 20, V25 video, um, we accomplished being able to change MIDI channels using a MIDI controller. Um, but I said I did it with the APC40. So we're going to be writing that script, but this will also cover writing any script. This will also cover scripting for the launch pad and livid blocks, I believe is what they're called. I don't know. I've never heard of them, but this also applies for them. FL currently supports scripting, custom scripting for only these controllers. But you can, uh, but later on, they may include scripting for any controller. I heard it was in the works. So that would be really cool. But for now, this is how you do the thing. So I have this set up just as a little example. I didn't have a way to change MIDI channel numbers so that I could, I could control uh, the MIDI channel information of this plugin to control these. What I, what I wanted to do was when I hit this button, look, that, look at that. It changes my articulation. I can quickly demo the sound. I could play live and switch between articulations in an extremely intuitive manner. So that was my goal, right? I wanted these to be able to change the information. So let's go ahead and talk about scripting. So to script, we need to first, so scripting, we're just gonna write a, some commands to make the controls do whatever we want. And it's basically just a list of numbers in this case. It's like super easy. So what we do is first, let's go to the internet and I'm going to go to the, the official page first. So this is the form post on image line posted by Nucleon, who includes the pad numbers for the launch pad, APC 40 and livid blocks. And these are, can these match the pads we have here? So super important. You can do, you can get lots of cool functionality out of like live performance or just regular performance in FL, which is what I was looking for uh, specifically for contact. So here, we obviously I have the APC 40, so we're gonna be using this one. But you have a whole bunch of additional commands down here, and he explains what the commands do, but it's a little confusing, especially if you're not used to um, coding. So there's another website, I think puts it a little more easily understood. So we're gonna to go to that website, it's this one. And this website has a nifty uh, thing here that lists out all the commands in a way that I thought was just awesome. So I used this when uh, coding because all the it's easy to look up everything. So we're just going to put in a list of numbers. So let's get to editing the script and then we'll come back to this. But this is all the instructions we need. So first, in order to do this, you need to go to where your custom scripts are stored. So go to the current version of FL you're using, wherever that's installed. So mine is installed, obviously, on my OS. Um, programs 86. We'll go to image line. And I'm running 12.4. I'm waiting for the most recent one to be out of beta because the beta keeps expiring and I don't want to update until it's a thing. So we have, once we get into there, you I went into data the first time. That's a mistake. Go to system. So system, then go to hardware specific. I'm sorry, that was a little fast, but system, hardware specific. And then, uh, now a quick note, again, you can only custom edit these controls at the time the livid blocks, the launch pad, and the Akai APCs. So like things like Native Instruments Machine has their own MIDI editor. The Elises V25 has its own editor. Usually they come with an editor of some sort, or you're just given really basic functionality. But uh, with these, these are just awesome. So they, they went an extra mile. So we're going to go to the APC at the top, and we have these files. And they're right now my computer thinks they're screensaver files because my computer's on drugs. And if you click it, it gets drunk and it says, I don't know what the jank this is. So opening these is a challenge if you're on Windows 8. I'm not sure if it's different on another system, but you just use Notepad. So we're going to just look for Notepad, boom, 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 open up Notepad. And then you don't actually have to, uh, to go looking in the files. You could just drag and drop. So we'll load up the example first because it's the example. Okay. So here we have our example. 
I'm going to make this a little bit longer so that text isn't wrapping or wrapping just a little bit. So, okay. If you've never scripted before, there's something you need to know about these apostrophes. These are, uh, I was calling these quotations earlier. Uh, these apostrophes are comments. So all this stuff is ignored by FL Studio. Um, and when you hit enter, that will start a new line. So even though word wrap is on, if we took word wrap off, if we have a, as you see, they would form straight lines. So when you hit enter on that new line, there that information will be seen by FL. So everything with an apostrophe is being seen by, not being seen by FL. This is information that is meant for you. And good, good programmers will always comment their code in a way that makes sense. So... Don't not comment your code. You'll regret it. You'll come back later and you'll have to do all this extra work just to figure out what you wrote, which at the time makes sense, but later on down the line, it won't make sense anymore. So we have our example one. Okay, so we have all these instructions up here. Don't worry about them right now. Uh, what we're going to worry about is just the examples. So we're basically going to be typing in strings of numbers. And those strings of numbers are these strings of numbers where the first number is our pad, our destination channel, if it's negative one, we get access to all these nifty commands like play, stop, required, rewind, move, zoom. So just lots and lots of awesome commands. So you could think of all sorts of cool things to do with this. And then also we have, uh, my screen's sort of blocking it, but we see here we have note channels. So we have our pads and then the channel information, which is what I was looking for. So we're gonna go and look at our examples now. So we say, I'm gonna move this real quick because I think where you put it is confusing. Okay, so right now our first pad, so pad zero, because we start with zero in programming, that way we can use all 10 single digits. So we have zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and that's 10 digits in total. So we wanna use you know everything we have, so we're gonna use that. If we were really crazy, we'd be using a hex, and I'm sure there's something even crazier than that. Hexadecimal, I mean. So, okay. So we have our first pad, which is pad zero, and it's outputting in MIDI channel zero, which is why I moved that. So this is MIDI channel zero, so it's outputting on channel zero. It's outputting note 60, which is C5, and it even says that C5. It's velocity, so at a velocity of 100, you have uh, from zero to 127 in MIDI, which gives you 128 levels. And then you have note value. So we have note value three and note value four. I mean, not no value. What the heck am I saying? Lights. These are the lights. And if we come over here, we see an off and on. So these are when our button is off, what color is it? When our button is on, what color is it? And so you see we have flashing and then just the regular. So we have green, red, and yellow and the ability to flash those. So, okay, nifty difty. And then we have some explanations on what things do. So for example, this one triggers a note, but this one has a negative one. And if we look at what our second uh, number means, that's our destination channel that's negative one. It's gonna do something fancy with these commands instead. So this one, will uh, it'll play. And so it's using command 10 and command 10 is the play command. If we look here, oh, it's a play command. And then uh, one and two, so we have zero. The zero is used to be a button and then one, two. So you could write in all these scripts to make them do anything, all those things. So let's go ahead and load up my script so I could show you uh, how it works. So we're gonna open up, my script is called page five. And a quick note on naming conventions. Uh, you're gonna wanna name them so that they make sense, like page one, two, three, four, five. Cause when you load them up, they don't have names. They're just like lights. So you need to know like, oh, this is script one, script two. Like for example, custom an example, it's like a wild card, you know, or those are the beginning or at the end. So you may consider changing the file extension. And what I mean by that is uh, going in and either deleting them or changing their extension so that, I, I believe I actually can't change the extension right now. So I would copy paste it into a text file, save it with a different extension. And then that way I could change it back if I wanted. So they're not here, which is what I plan to do. So for example, let's do it to this custom script. Let's say for whatever reason, I really wanted to keep this custom script. So I could hit control C and save it. Um, and now I'm going to go to file new. I'm going to paste it in. I'm going to delete this original one and then I'm going to just save, save as, I'm just going to save it as customs. Well, I think it's custom, whatever, you know, script backup. And now it's saved, but it will not appear on here in the future. 
this is all this has all been loaded up with FL right now, so it'll appear for now. Maybe it will disappear. Nah, it's gonna be there. But when I restart it, it'll no longer be there. And if I ever wanted it back, I could go in and save it again, this time as a SCR file. We'll talk about saving in a sec. So that's what I mean by that. So you want to get rid of these extra scripts. They're confusing. Page five is my last one. So I, I know that if I want page five, there it is. Bang, last one. So that's what's going on. So let's go ahead and load up my script. I wanted it to just simply change, see, comment, script to change MIDI channel number. And then the apostrophe makes it ignored. And then we have... We know our first ones are pad number, so I want pads uh, 0 through 15, which gives me 16 channels of information because 0 is not counted, and then or it's counted as 1. And then we have 0 to 15 on our MIDI channel. So every pad will output the MIDI channel number it is. So this is our first pad, so this will output pad, channel 1. Channel If this was pad 2, this will output channel 2. So now I'm able to output it. Now... In order for this to work with my plugin, it needs to output a note. And so I put I output note 127. Why 127? Well, it's just a note I am not going to use. And so that's that. If you're working with a synth, this can get complicated. There's actually a way to fix it. I'm actually going to do it now. I'm going to output a note, and this is the velocity. I'm going to output it at velocity 0. And what this will do is, even if it does trigger a sound, the sound will be silent. So... It would change my channel information, and I don't need to worry about um, it making any noise. So that's what this is going to be. And then the lights. So lights 3, 4. Uh, one, I think it's like, what is this? Flashing, red and red flashing or something. So that's what those are. And so now you see, that's super easy stuff. You literally just come in here and look up your table and type in the numbers. It's great. And you separate them with commas because, you know, who knows how many digits there's going to be. So it needs a comma to know that that's the end. Uh, now we need to save it. I don't trust Control S because I think it'll save it as a text file. You could experiment and try it out. But what I do is I just go to save, save as, especially if this is your first uh, time doing the script. We want to go to, right now it's text, see? So we, we don't see our files. We go to all files. Bang, there they all are. And we want to save it as a dot, whoops, SCR. And this will save it as the file type necessary for FL to see it. We hit save. And I already have one, so I'm going to overwrite it. Now, new and improved script has been written. So that's it. You've loaded, you've written your script. Now let's uh, load our script. And so as I said at the beginning, all you do is you hit shift and go over. Now, to load up the script, you have to refresh your controller. I am not going to do that right now because I am running two instances of FL that are using, it, 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 it would just shut down my recording. I don't want to do anything weird. But you would come in here and what you would do is you would turn it, uh, turn your controller off or unplug it and then turn it back on. Or you could restart FL. Sometimes that's annoying. Um, I believe you might also be able to just turn them off and then turn them back on in here without turning anything off or unplugging anything. But I don't know, you know, whatever it is, you just need to restart the thing. And then when you push shift, it'll load up and whatever number you named it, it'll be that one. So we like, here it is. And then we, then you just go ahead and you test it. So we have our 16 rows and it's changing them as I wanted it to. So that is like super rad. So that is how you do custom scripting for this. If you have any questions about this, let me know. Support me on Patreon. I greatly appreciate it. It lets me make videos like this and also figure out stuff like this so that you can do these things. If you want the file, this file, um, I'll think about putting it up. I may forget. So just comment like, hey, could you put the file up? And I'll put this script file up so that you too can have this dope way. But you also need to know about this plugin if you intend to do something like this because there's a funny thing you have to do to channel one. I'll put a link if you want that video because there's a video for that. Uh, it covers controlling the BRSO plugin. This time I'm using an Elise's V25 with their eight buttons. That's why I have this though to get to the other channels that I couldn't get to before. So yes, have a blessed day.